We're only two. We are six, oh, seven garage. Six or seven now. <laughs> okay. Will we wait or will we begin? Uh, I think uh, we can begin. They will They'll come. Uh, join. Yeah. Yes. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chatsurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shremati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvasesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, we're on, today we're beginning uh, chapter number six of the Krishna book. This is entitled Put on a Kilt. In the last chapter, we heard about Nanda Maharaj going to Mathura, and in Mathura he met Vasudev, and Vasudev warned him, You should go back quick. Vasudev was worried for the safety of child baby Krishna. So he encouraged Nanda Maharaj, it's better you go back to Goku as quick as you can. Don't just leave the ladies on their own. Vasudev's other wife, Rohini, was also there in Goku, and she has baby Balaram. And of course, Mother Yashoda, she has baby Krishna to take care of. So Nanda Maharaj, when he heard this from Vasudeva, he thought this is true. He thought it's I should I should go back as quick as I can. So he, Nanda Maharaj left Mathura to come back to Goku. So coming back to Goku, he's praying to Krishna, he's thinking of Krishna. And Prabhupada said, this is devotee. Whenever there's some problem, we will think of Krishna. Krishna. 
สาวกนะคะสาวกเนี่ยเวลามีความลำบากใดๆก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยเขาจะคิดถึงพระ Of course, a devotee will think of Krishna all the time, not only when there's some danger. But especially when there's danger, then we'll be very quick to think of Krishna and pray to Krishna. We know Queen Kunti. She prays to Krishna. Let all the problems, all the dangers come, because it makes it easier for me to think of you, Krishna. So then the chapter talks. We hear now about Kamsa, and how Kamsa had all of his demonic friends, and they were talking together about what to do because they heard the child was born who's going to kill Kamsa. So, Kamsa told one of his demonic friends was a witch. Her name was Putana. And he told her to go and kill all the small children. So this witch Putana was very cunning, and she knew how to travel. She could travel. On a on a a bit of on a branch of a tree or on a broomstick, and she could fly through the air. But these witches, they cannot do these things wherever there is chanting of the holy name of Krishna. If, if we're ever worried about ghosts or these kind of things like witches or any dangers. We just take shelter of the holy name of Krishna, and the danger all goes. Yeah, even these dim, these people like witches and ghosts. They they don't want to be where there's the chanting of the holy name. So especially a place like Vrindavan, where there's a holy place where all the devotees are there and where Krishna Himself was personally present. So there's no danger from Putana in places like Vrindavan. She's there. These people are powerful. The people like Putana are powerful. They've got these mystic powers. They can do these things. But 
They cannot overcome the spiritual power. So Putana using her powers, she came into Goku, she got into Goku, somehow maybe she flew in and then she used her magic powers to change her body, to make herself look like a very beautiful woman. And so she looked like a gopi, you know, she looked like actually a devotee, like a gopi, just like women wear the gopi dresses, so Putana looked like that. And with her power, she made herself look very nice. She had thin waist and she has swollen breasts and looks very physically attractive. And she's very clever. She looks at everybody and smiles and makes them all feel comfortable. And they see her, oh, what a nice devotee. So the, the other cowherd ladies, the other gopis, they thought, oh, she must be, maybe she's like the goddess of fortune come to see Krishna. Of course, Krishna is the husband of the goddess of fortune, so the goddess of fortune has come to see her husband. So, because she looks so attractive and because she's very, she's smiling and very relaxed, so nobody bothered about her. It, it all seems so natural. So she walked right in, she could go right into the home of Nanda Maharaj and she walked right in and then she saw the baby, she saw Krishna lying on his bed there. Now by this time Putana had already killed many, many small children. But when she saw Krishna, then she understood, oh, this child is very powerful. Although Krishna is just a little baby laying on the bed, but Putana somehow from the heart, maybe Krishna from the heart was telling her, because Krishna is also in the heart of the demon, so he's telling her this child is very powerful. So, 
the super soul, Krishna in the heart, told her, this is no ordinary child. He is the Supreme Lord. So foolish people may think, oh, he's only a small baby, he can't be very powerful. But God is always God, even when he's a baby. Even as a baby, he's Bhagavan, he has all the opulences of the Supreme. So, other foolish people, they do not understand the nature of God. Just like some people have the philosophy that, oh, we were all God before, but we've forgotten it due to Maya. When we get rid of Maya, then we'll become God again. <laughs> but we cannot say like that. It's a wrong philosophy. Means Maya is more powerful than God. If we are God, then Maya, how is it Maya can put God into illusion? Maya must be greater than God. So God is like the, the big fire, and we're like little sparks of the fire. Your microphone is something wrong. Now it's okay? Yeah. So, Krishna is like the original fire, we're like the sparks. The fire cannot be, the big fire cannot be influenced by Maya, but the spark can be put out. So Krishna is always God. But he's, he's appearing like a small baby and Putana has come and she wants to try to kill him. So, Krishna closes his eyes to give Putana comfort, let Putana come, he closes his eyes, he doesn't look at her. Different reasons why he closed his eyes, many reasons. Some say he didn't want to see the face of her because she's so sinful. And some other people say he closed his eyes to give her more confidence, to encourage her because she was hesitating.
Krishna has come and Krishna's mission is to kill the demons and she's a big demon. But, but she's in the form of a woman and it's not very proper to kill women. You're not supposed to kill women, you're not supposed to kill cows or brahmanas or children. But this woman is a big demon. So Krishna took her as her mother, as his mother, because she's come and she's going she wants to feed her breast milk to Krishna and she's put poison on her breast milk to give to Krishna. She, she's pretending she's a gopi, she's dressed like a gopi, and now she's pretending to be the nurse. And she picks up the baby and she wants to feed her breast milk to Krishna. So nurse is one of the seven kinds of mothers that we have. Yeah. The other mothers are the cow. And the earth, the planet earth is also mother. The wife of the Brahman is a mother. And the wife of the king is a mother. Wife of the king. King. Okay. And the wife of, wife of the guru is a mother. And then we have a real mother. So Putana takes Krishna just like she is his mother. And Krishna is closing his eyes because he's got to kill his mother, he's got to kill his nurse. So, Putana has become like Yasoda. She, just as Yasoda is Krishna's mother, Putana is also Krishna's mother. So Putana is also going to get liberation. So when she picked up Krishna, she didn't know that she was going to, that she was holding somebody who was going to kill her. She was thinking she could kill Krishna because she killed so many other babies. She thought Krishna is just like these other babies. So 
เขาเนี่ยฆ่าเด็กมาเยอะแล้วเขาก็คิดว่าเขาก็น่าจะฆ่าคุณนาได้ And Yashoda is there, and Rohini is there, and they're both watching, and they see Putana pick up Krishna, and they don't mind. They think it's very nice. But Putana had put very powerful poison on her breast. And so she picked up baby Krishna and she put her nipple, her breast nipple, into Krishna's mouth. And she thought, when Krishna sucks her breast, he will die. But Krishna was a little angry, and he sucked her breast, and he bit her breast, and he sucked out her the the milk, and he also sucked out her life air. Krishna is so merciful that he accepted the breast milk of Putana. But to stop her from killing all the children, Krishna killed her. And because she was killed by Krishna, she got liberation. So when Krishna bit her breast, then she called out, "Oh, oh, leave me, leave me!" And, and Krishna was. She was calling out, "Oh, leave me!" And she ran out of the house. She ran out of the house into the field. And she was sweating. Her whole body became wet. And she and she, she was screaming and she fell to the ground. And when she fell on the ground, there was a huge sound, a big, a big sound in the heavens, in the sky. But people thought, "What's happening?" They didn't know. And when she when she fell down, she assumed her real form as a witch, a very huge, gigantic, horrible-looking witch. Her big arms and legs were spread all over the place. Her long hair was all over her face as well. And her body was twelve miles long. It smashed so many trees. She had a gigantic body. 
All the cowherd men and women in the village in Goku, they were astonished. What is this? And so then the gopis, they thought, where's Krishna? And then they saw Krishna, he's playing on the, on the lap of Putana. He's still on the body of Putana, on her lap. He's sitting there playing. So Mother Yashoda and the other gopis, they all have to take care of Krishna, they want to do some rituals for his protection. So first thing they did was they got the tail of the cow and circumambulated his body with it. The, what, what of the, the cow? The tail. Tail. Okay. And then they washed baby Krishna with the urine of a cow. And then they collected the dust created from, from the cows, when the cows walk, that the dust comes in there, they collected that and they threw it all over Krishna's body. So this was to, this is to protect Krishna from anything inauspicious, from any accident. And so you can see how important it is to keep cows at home. You can do the if you don't have a cow, you can't do these things. Of course, Krishna doesn't need any protection, but we ha we have to learn how important the cow is. And so Krishna was his body was covered. We covered they covered his body with cow dung. Then wash him with the urine of the cow. Then the dust from the walking of the cows. What do we do? What do you do now when you have a baby? The mother, they will buy all things from the, the chemist's store. They will buy powder and cream and all chemicals, useless things. But the real thing, the best things are the natural things. And you get the best protection from the cows. Then, mo then Mother Yashoda and Rohini and the other gopis, they all chant the names, different names of Lord Vishnu. First they wash their hands and feet. Then they 
and then they take water, sip water three times, like Akshman. And then they chant mantra, they chant all the man all different names of the Lord to protect the different parts of the body of Krishna. Mother Yashoda is a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. She knows that she can protect her child by chanting the name of Lord Vishnu. There are many different kinds of evil spirits and sometimes they come in our dream, sometimes they give us trouble. Sometimes they come as in the form of old women and they will suck the blood of little children. But they cannot come where there is chanting of the holy names of God. So Mother Yashoda, she knew this and she took shelter, take, use all the things from the cow and chant the holy name of Vishnu. So this is this is Vedic culture for since the beginning of time people would chant the holy names of the Lord and they would keep cows. And Prabhupada said, householders, they should keep at least a dozen cows and worship the deity of Vishnu. Keep a dozen of cows. Keep a dozen. Twelve cows, at least twelve cows. <laughs> so people who are serious devotees, they should learn from this pastime to the importance of cows. Actually, Krishna can protect himself, but the gopis, they don't think like that. They want to protect him. Mother Yashoda and the gopis, they don't think of Krishna as God. They think of him as their child. So Mother Yashoda, when she chanted the Vishnu mantra, then she thought, my child is safe now. So it was at that time Nanda Maharaj came back. He got back to Goku and he, they saw this huge body there. And he, he remembered about Vasudev telling him that there may be some danger there. So he thought, Vasudev, 
he must be a he must be a, a, a great mistake that he can tell the future. So Putana's body is so huge that the, all the people of Vrindavan, they had to come and cut it all up into pieces and they use it for wood, for burning. And when they burned the, the body of Putana, when they burned the different parts of her body, it had a very nice smell. And that everybody oh, thought, oh, this it smells so good. They could, this was because she was killed by Krishna. Although she was a big demon and she killed so many small children, she was very sinful, Krishna had purified her because he had taken her milk. So, so Putana, she gave Krishna milk, but she wanted to kill him. So if we give Krishna milk with love, then we will get so much more benefit than Putana. Putana didn't want to do devotional service. She had evil intentions. She's very sinful. But if we offer something to Krishna, you get the benefit. So, just like if you take a flower from a tree and offer it to Krishna, the tree gets benefit. Or you take, or you take some plants or some uh, some fruits. If we take the, and we offer to Krishna, then the plant gets benefit. The tree gets benefit. So Putana was very fortunate because Krishna, his lotus feet were touching the body of Putana. So people, they want to get the dust of Krishna's feet. Putana was so lucky that his feet were on her body. So Putana, who is an enemy of Krishna, got so much benefit. Then what about people who are not enemies, who are devotees? They will get so much benefit. อันนี้นะคะก็เป็นข้อคิดให้เราคิดว่าเอ่อ 
The cows also offer milk to Krishna, they also get benefit. And the gopis who are all serving Krishna there, they are also benefited. And Putana, you know, because although she's the enemy and she wants to kill Krishna, she also got liberated. She got to be Krishna's mother. So all the people of Vrindavan, the gopis, the coward boys, the cows, everyone, they're all going to be liberated. They're all great devotees. So while they were burning Putana's body, they could smell, oh, very nice smell, and they understood, oh, it's coming from Putana. Oh, the smell is so good. <laughs> So Nanda Maharaj is, comes home and he picks up Krishna and he smells his head and hugs him. He's happy to see his little child, that his child is safe. So Sukadeva Goswami gives a blessing that anybody who hears about the killing of Putana by Krishna will get the mercy of Govinda. So are, there, are there any questions? Uh, good if I have one question. Yeah. Uh, my question is uh, about the holy place, Guru Maharaj. The holy place is the place that uh, being brought by Krishna himself, all the place uh, that uh, Supreme Lord goes and that place become holy. How, how is it, Guru Maharaj? So, uh, well, there are holy places which are called a dam, just like Vrindavan Dam or Mayapur Dam. It said the Lord resides there eternally. So it's not that he just appears there 5,000 years ago, but he's always there. And the, whole, the, whole, the holy dam is eternal, it's not different from Krishna, it's a eternal, full of bliss and knowledge, it's Satchitananda. So the Lord is eternally present in these dams. And since time immemorial, just like uh, from the beginning of the creation, we read about 
Brahma and, and the Satya Yuga, great sages and yogis, they would come and do meditation there in these places. So Adam is different from a Tirtha. A Tirtha is a holy place. If somebody comes there, they stay there for some time, they make it a holy place. You know, so there are Tirthas, but the Dham is more powerful than the Tirtha. Not Shetra, Tirtha. Tirtha. T I R T H A. Tirtha means like a bridge to cross over. To cross over from the material world to material existence into the spiritual existence. But Dham is where the Lord is residing all the time. Performing his pastimes. Now sometimes he's manifest and sometimes he's not manifest. Right. Prakat and aprakat. Sometimes he's prakat, sometimes aprakat. So like five thousand years ago, he's manifest, he's prakat. Now is Aprika. But some great devotees, they can see. They go there, they come to the dam, they will see Krishna. Just like here in Mayapur, Lord Chaitanya is here. He's performing Sankirtan. So, so this is the difference. Understand? Dam? Yes, good. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other question in the chat? One question there? Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Dev, Jandavar Prana. No. no. From Nanda. No, Nanda. Qu no question. Just Nanda Prana. Yeah, yeah. Just Nanda Prana. Do you have a question? Okay. So Hare Krishna, Vee Mataji. Hare, yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, yeah. My humble obeisance, sir. Uh -huh. Guru Maharaj, is it like before uh, Dwapara Yuga, before Krishna appeared, uh, no, everyone prayed only to Vishnu. They don't have, uh, they didn't pray to Krishna, uh, like uh, they didn't know that Krishna in the spiritual world. Is it like that? Before Dwapara Yuga? Yes, Guru Maharaj, in other yugas. Because I, today, uh, we saw today also Yashoda prayed to Vishnu, not like Krishna. อ่าฮะโอเคนะคะคําถามของมาตาจีถามว่าก่อนเอ่อดราปะยุคเนี่ยที่เอ่อกิชนะจะทรงปรากฏเนี่ยทุกคนเนี่ยเขาจะบูช
they will also mention Krishna sometimes and offer prayer to Krishna. Krishna is very confidential. Not everyone can understand his transcendental position. So Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, she had their great devotees of Vishnu, and we see also Vasudeva and Devaki, they also worship Vishnu. But the Lord appeared to them in the Vishnu form, but then he took the form of Krishna. So Vasudeva and Devaki, they actually know, they see Krishna as God. They have a different mood from Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, they, they just think of Krishna as their child, so they won't pray to Krishna as God, because they, just, they have that mood that Krishna is our child, you see, it would ruin the, they wouldn't be able, Krishna, Krishna wants that motherly, fatherly affection from them. He doesn't want them, him to worship them. They don't, he doesn't want Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda to worship him as God. So when they're in danger, then they pray to they pray to Vishnu, of course. But we will see also, we will see different times, different demons come. They will call to Krishna to come and save them. Just like when Indra sent the, the clouds to devastate Vrindavan, the, the, Nanda Maharaj and all the people of Vrindavan, they all came to Krishna for help. They didn't pray to Vishnu to save them. And when the, the forest fire is coming, they pray to Krishna, save us. And when the big snake was f swallowing Nanda Maharaj, there was a big snake eating Nanda Maharaj, and they couldn't get, the, they brought burning logs and they tried to stop the snake, they couldn't save him, but then they called to Krishna and Krishna came and he saved them. So they know that they're, when they're in danger, they just turn to Krishna. They don't think of anybody else. Of course, when Krishna killed Putana, well, after Krishna had killed Putana, they thought, oh, Krishna Krishna's killed the demon, and they still want to protect Krishna, so they, they used the names of Vishnu. 
พราะฉะนั้นหลังจากที่คริสตันเนี่ยสังหารปูตนาแล้วใช่ไหมคะเขาเนี่ยอยากจะปกป้องคริสตันนะะในการปกป้องคริสตันเขาก็เลยหาวิธีที่แบบทำยังไงให้พระองค์เนี่ยทรงปลอดภัยจ้ะ But these names of Vishnu, they're also names. They can also be applied to Krishna. So yeah, before before five thousand years ago, uh, we don't know that that we don't know that the people knew anything about Krishna's pastimes or about the different. Uh, Lila of Krishna. That's only since five thousand years. One of the one of the reasons is things get lost. Things get lost in time. In the course of time, things become lost. Just like Krishna had to come and speak Bhagavad Gita again. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he praised Lord Chaitanya that you have brought. Things which have been lost in the course of time, but you've brought them back. You've saved it. You've brought them. You've saved it. Saved it for us. So yes, the worship of Krishna is not very wasn't very popular. It wasn't very widespread. It was more common to worship Vishnu or worship Lord Rama. We see. We see also more temples of Lord Shiva than anybody. Because ordin ordinary people, they they like to get benefit quickly, so they worship Lord Shiva. They want material benefit, so they get that quickly from Lord Shiva. But when you worship Krishna, takes more time. Krishna gives. The greatest thing, Krishna takes away our material desires and gives us Krishna consciousness. By the grace of Krishna, we can get free of birth and death. So we don't get that very so easily. It takes more time. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the very nice explanation. Okay, so maybe we stop okay. here today, Archana. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Thank you very His much. His Holiness B B V Narasimha Swami Maharaj ki. Archana Maharaji ki. Gaur Bhakt Vrinda ki. Shri Prabhupada ki. Bye. 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 Bye
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.